Hey, look at that. Got a second chin. Starting to look like Tim. <laughs> kind of going up in a place that's probably crazy. I'm sure everybody would think I was nuts if they saw where I was going, but hey, I'm gonna try it. There's been 10, 15 elk that have walked through here and there. It's a lot more snow than I thought. Makes for a little tough walking, but I better get cracking because I want it to be on top right now. You can never be too sure, but I'm pretty sure that's a 350 inch bull track. Two minutes left on this camera. Forgot all my memory cards. Gonna have to make it quick. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. I lose another big buck like that to these damn cameras. Patience is definitely a virtue that I have. More like this. That's a bad day right there. Hungry eat, thirsty drink. Cold, make fire. This week, I'd like to introduce you to my brother, Boyd. I've been trying to convince Boyd to be a part of the show ever since I started, but for some reason, the kid has taken forever to warm up to the idea of being on camera. Hauling around a camera on your hunts, as he would say, is highly less effective. It's a pretty professional filmography or whatever you call it. Boyd is a true hunter, a traditionalist by heart, but an opportunist by choice. As such, no choice of weapons nor animals of prey will ever be discriminated against. You were right, minion. I was less right. Told ya. Boyd is about as down to earth and humble of a guy that you could ever meet. But the kid is also a natural born killer, and he's always quick to remind me of that fact. It seems like the years have gone by so fast that our opportunities to spend time hunting together have been far and few between. But now, the times are changing. Wing nut. There's a Tim word for you, wing nut. All joking aside, I've got to admit that Boyd has grown up to be a pretty impressive hunter. And in truth, he always has been, from an early age. Outdoor lifestyle, stability, and flexibility have always been a priority of his. And now as he makes his home in rural Montana, he's finally finding more time to spend in the woods. The main difference between Boyd and I are that he seems to have held on to the traditional ways of archery that we learned as kids. Painting arrows, building jigs, and even raising turkeys to make his own fletchings. It's all a part of the hunting and outdoor lifestyle that so many of us hold dear and will do whatever it takes to protect. tomorrow 10 30 I'm gonna leave at 4 in the morning I think I finally might have got everything ready almost forgot to bring hunter's orange call me crazy but I'm gonna pack the longbow and the rifle just in case I see some elk we're gonna test out the uh, new pack baby It's opening day of rifle antelope. While the primary focus of this hunt is going to be to find a good antelope buck, I know this area holds a lot of elk and mule deer, so I'm carrying the bow along for the ride. Just up here, just heard a couple shots, and then I looked up on the hill, and there's a bull coming over the top. And I'm glad I brought my bow. The only trouble is, is there's antelope hunters everywhere. This country is wide open and this bull is feeding off the hill towards an army of antelope hunters driving the roads down below. The elk tend to come off these sagebrush hills to hit water down in these low, isolated drainages. With experience from past antelope openers, I know the lower roads are gonna be packed with hunters driving the roads looking for a pronghorn. Past experience has also shown me that you don't have to get very far from the roads to lose sight of the majority of the other hunters and start seeing all kinds of sagebrush dwelling critters. Just 
hiking up here. Saw a pretty good sized five point bull. No antelope yet, but hearing shots with all the goons down driving in their trucks. I just spotted a bunch of mules. mule deer. I'm sure you can't hear me. Now there's nothing I love more than glassing up a bachelor group of muley bucks. It didn't take long for my focus to change from antelope to looking at these deer. I could sit in a spot like this all day and watch bucks. With archery season in full swing, my plan will be to watch these deer until they bed and pray that they bed in a place conducive to a stock. With my longbow and this wind, I'm gonna need to get close. This is wide open country. We designed the Solo Hunter Bino Harness to be ultra functional in the field, particularly for bow hunters. It needed to be low profile, compact, super quiet but durable, and have one handed operation. I think for the most part, we nailed it. Just spotted a couple doe antelope up here. I'm gonna go see if there's any bucks in there, anything decent. They saw me, but I, I don't know if they spooked or not, so I'm gonna try to sneak up here and get another look at them. Those mule deer are bedded over here. I'm gonna go look at the antelope. The, those deer just didn't bed in a spot that I feel like I can get on. Let's go see what we can see up here. The wind is really screaming and I need to get where I can get on the larger group with the buck. I could see another group above me and while trying not to be seen by them, I bumped into this small lone buck. That must have been wishing he could get in with the ladies from one of these two groups. I could tell he wasn't very spooked and with this wind likely didn't even know what bumped him. It didn't take long for him to move around the hill so I could keep moving in on the bigger buck and his does. Just as I had hoped, the group had just crested the ridge and bedded down out of the wind. It's a waiting game now as I move to get set up and wait for the buck to stand. It won't be a real long shot, but with this wind is blowing so hard, it's gonna be really tough to hold the rifle steady as I kneel on the rocks on the top of this ridge. shot in him. I think I hit him far back because of the wind, but I'm sure you can't hear me. Ah, circus. Up. 
bad. Dang. I'll take him. Not bad. Oh, that's a nice buck. Keeping your rifle protected, clean, and dry while hunting is a big priority, but so is having the ability to get at it quickly when you need it. That's where the rifle cover comes into play. I have this thing on my rifle all the time. Until it's time to pull the trigger, this rifle cover is on my rifle. Well, I made the boo-boo and not filming at the truck when I left. I was in kind of a hurry. Got out of work a little late today. It's Friday afternoon. It's about 4.30. I've been hiking for about an hour and a half up this mountain. Really hot and dry, it's gotta be 70 degrees. And we're mid-October. It's the last weekend of archery up here. Going in for one last hoo-ha, see what I can see. I'm gonna backpack up here probably six, seven miles and camp out overnight. It's still a little smoky from the Idaho fires. Need some rain. So we'll see what we can do the next couple days. Nothing else, I'm kind of spotting for muley. Saw a couple decent ones in here a couple years, or last year. Really, this is kind of a scouting trip for me, looking for muleys. After giving myself a C- minus on the antelope hunt with a rifle, I can't help but remember the first year I tackled the task of chasing elk with my bow and with the camera in hand. It's hard enough to try to kill an elk with a bow, but I don't know why I would want to try and carry a camera in the other hand. I just came in last night by backpacking in here where I, a couple of years ago I saw a ton of elk, bugle ones, saw three fights and almost got a shot at a big bull. Anyway, just checking it out again this year. Should have probably turned on the camera back at the camp. This is beautiful country. I love this place. I'm gonna go up around the top to the water right there and then cut down back around under those cliffs and go up on the top there and drop over into another amazing basin. small six but it's been a while since I got that much buck fever going through the blood I think I hit a foot over his back don't hear it said very often anymore but gotta pick a spot gotta stay up here on top see if I can 
see or hear any big boys. For information on Solo Hunter rifle covers or our Bino harness system, or to find us on social media for exclusive photos and videos, connect with us on our website at solohunter.com. Ten minutes of legal flight. Just had a bull bugling. Called him into 40 yards and thumped him. He's over here still dying. get him out in a half day. There's a bull screaming down here. I bet you I have some elk come walk through me. While I gave myself a failing grade that first year, it's always nice to have the footage for the memories it holds. One of my favorite parts of elk hunting has always been and always will be the chance to get into the most beautiful country around. The biggest thing I've realized, you know, in the last couple of years, I just keep thinking over and over that you know, right now, privatization of, of public lands, it's in the spotlight big time and it makes me sick to my stomach of thinking of transferring our public lands over to state control or, or privatization of, of public lands. Just having some lunch. Can't beat a cold day on the mountain and an old mountain house for lunch. That scares me more than anything. And it's funny because I read articles, I can't remember if it was Don Thomas or who it was in Traditional bow hunter, where, you know, 10, 12 years ago, these guys were saying that, you know, it's not our hunting rights or whatever else that we need to worry about. It's the, it's the loss of public land. A little bit of elk crossing the road. It's just a few. I completely thought, man, that's nuts. I've never heard of that. These guys are crazy. But it is amazing to me the landslide of, of that movement of pushing our public lands over to private control. It, it scares me. You know, in my job, I've spoke with some of the Montana County reps and heard their opinions, and that scares me more than anything else. Is, is that tr that big push to transfer our lands. Because viewers probably know, but that's what Tim and I and a lot of other hunters, that's, that's all we have is public land. I'd shoot any of them with that longbow. I'd even make an orphan with the longbow. I think that far left one on the cliff just looks manly. He's a bit just crossed a mess load of cougar tracks. I don't think I've ever seen that many in my life. I've seen that sick bull over here. I love the quote from a man I love and respect that said, comparison is the, the thief of happiness. And I think it's true. That's why it doesn't necessarily matter if I'm carrying my longbow or my self bow or my compound or my rifle or my 30-30 or, or just walking with my kids. If I'm in the woods, I'm a happy man, and I love it. As the older brother, it makes me proud of what my little brother has accomplished in life. Sometimes it seems like some guys have everything that we've ever wanted out of life. But for those that are motivated by what true happiness is, there is always room for something more. Family, friends, community, and overall sense of being are all the things that will bring a man true happiness. 
Hunting is not life. Hunting is a part of life, for some more major than for others. But we all need to combine our voices to help fight the fight to protect it. Although hunting alone is what I tend to do more often than not, it is my adventures with Boyd and with others that I most eagerly look forward to, and for those that I tend to enjoy the most. Funny but true.